day-to-day -day world. The challenge really is to discover and to interpret this data and communicate key findings from the data to very powerful analysis. Now, traditionally, we've had data, the, the, the data from businesses being stored in databases and uh, then taken from those databases into, let's say, a spreadsheet, uh, which is a very common uh, office productivity tool which most of us use. But that is a very simplistic and two-dimensional view of what exactly uh, the, the data analysis tool is. Now what this uh, we're going to show you today here is how Pentium 2 processor-based business desktop systems, how they can be used to visualize and analyze business data in a very easy to comprehend uh, 3D format. Uh, and this demo is from uh, Visual, uh, Visual Decisions Incorporated, which is a company which offers real-time visual software technology uh, which enables the analysis of raw business data using interactive 3D graphics. So uh, let's take an example over here uh, of, this is a map of the uh, United States, and let's say I'm a business manager in a company uh, in the United States. What this really shows is, the, is an overview of the sales data of my company where the height of each state represents the volume of sales which is generated. Okay. And we can instantly tell which of these states are above, let's say, uh, let's take a parameter like, let's say, the national average. So which state is performing over and above the national average? So let's take, so there it is. You can see here that you can, uh, by just changing a few parameters, you can get to know that uh, states like Florida, New York, and Washington are above the uh, national average. We can then oh, we can over then overview the performance of each state over let's say a period of time let, like let's say 12 months and this data is actually being crunched in real time so here you can see that as over the last 12 months the uh, the variation in sales performance is actually seen and this kind of capability requires very high performance microprocessors like the Pentium 2 because this is actually crunching 50,000 data points at a given point in time. So that's a huge amount of data which is being crunched in real time and which is being displayed. Now, how can this really be used in, uh, let's say, a day-to-day -day business activity? This looks very nice, but how can then uh, we use it effectively in business? So let's take an example here. Let's drill down into, let's take an example of Washington State and take a look at how a specific store in Washington State is performing. So, but really, What's telling, what's it, what it's telling me is that the gross margin delivered from the store is really spectacular. And I can see that in a very easy to comprehend format. I would have had to crunch in a spreadsheet, for instance, I would have had to go through large amounts of numbers to actually figure out as to what uh, the gross margin performance is. So this gives me a one snapshot view of what exactly, how exactly the store is performing. And then I can make my marketing decisions based on that. Now we've seen a great store, uh, how it's performing, how good it is. We now need to take a look at some of the poor performance. So uh, let's take an example here. We can change some parameters, and we can uh, try and figure out how gross margins are being affected in certain specific areas. Like this example is that of a state uh, a store in the state of Chicago, where we have details that the gross margin is specifically uh, going down. And uh, the red bar really indicates that that shop is not doing too well. Just off, either through a local area network within the organization, or through the internet, or through a corporate intranet which is deployed within a specific organization. Pretty much back to you, Thanks, Mahesh. Uh, something just struck me. You know, Mahesh, next time you're doing our annual performance evaluations, this is a great tool to compare what you're doing with the rest of your counterparts across the region. So, area, in the area of decision making. Now, let's these things. The Pentium Pro had roughly five point some odd million transistors. It's based on a 0.35 micron CMOS technology that again is a silicon technology and grid uh, the size of a human hair. And that is the dimension between two lines on the silicon chip. Uh, we talked about the dynamic execution and the MMX technology that has been incorporated into the Pentium 2. Well, and beyond the CPU core, we've gone and done a whole lot of exciting things with the cache. Cache refers to memory, that the CPU interface K to 32K kilobytes. Furthermore, what we've done is, the second level cache, we've closely coupled it with the CPU, 